Hey guys, gangster, yeah, I got a mask on. <laughs> What's up? I want to give you guys an update on our like carbureted fiasco here running these two uh, Torx Storm superchargers when they really want to charge hard. They're way into four digits, but we got a problem and we've had a problem for the last few days with uh, getting enough fuel to this thing. And I talked to you a little bit about in the past two videos. If you haven't taken a look at them, check them out. First one is right here where we're doing the prep and I like that high speed stuff. I, I love watching videos where guys do the, they turn the speed up on and do an assembly or disassembly. It looks really cool and that's why I did that one. And then the next video, check it out right here. That's us running the motor and talking about why we couldn't get enough fuel. You know, first we tried to start with fuel injection and then went with the carburation and stuff. And what I want to do is, um, we first tried that quick fuel carburetor, and I want to show you what we did on that to try to get enough fuel to it. And then, as luck would have it, and kind of the reason I'm doing this video, is to talk to you guys about the fact that this industry, this automotive industry, like I love all the cool parts, superchargers and cams, and all the parts are really cool. But the reality is that the best thing about this industry is not the parts. It's the people. And I'll give you an example. Yesterday, I called uh, Kevin from CSU Carburetor and told him what we were doing. I said, hey, look, I, you know, we, what we really need is a new E85 blow-through carburetor. Because I already had his, one of his gas carburetors, and we've run it on literally hundreds of combinations. Big blocks, small blocks, LSs, any kind of blow-through deal that we ran with a supercharger or turbos. You know, I've made well over 1,200 horsepower with that blow-through carburetor in, on gas, and it works really good. The problem was it was a gas carburetor and we kind of wanted to run E85 on this thing. So I called Kevin and said, hey, look, here's what's going on. We want you to come over and work your magic. And do you have an E85 carburetor? And he said, yeah, I've got a customer who has one. And I'm going to go ahead and put his name up here because I can't remember off the top of my head. But thanks a lot for ha helping us out and having uh, loaning us the carburetor so Kevin can come down and try to work his magic. Now, Kevin did come down and we put the carburetor on and we're running into the same problem. So I want to, I want you guys to help us out. Let me know what you think. But before that, because we got so many comments on the past video, I want you guys to know all of the things that we did, all the things that we tried, because everybody's saying, oh, you need more needle and seat. And the reality is that's not the case because the carburetor that we ran from Kevin on gasoline has a single needle and seat. And we have made way over, like I said, way over 1,200 horsepower with that single needle and seat. So that's not the problem. And also, and I'll go over all this stuff in a minute, but we tried a bigger needle and seat. We went from 120 to 130, all the way up to 140, 150. And we just didn't see a big change in what was going on. No matter what we did, this thing was just trending lean. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the stuff that we did to the quick fuel carburetor. Because obviously after we tried Kevin's and it was doing the same thing, it's not really a big issue with that quick fuel. I'll show you what we did to that one. I'll show you what we did with Kevin's carburetor. I tried two E85 carburetors. Then I switched over to gas thinking that, hey, we can make the power with the gas because it takes a lot less fuel flow. So we can solve this problem. And it did the same thing. So I'll talk about what we did and what we did with the fuel supply from the dyno. And then you guys can let me know what you think. What do you think is causing this? Let's get to it. What's up? Okay, this is our quick fuel blow through carburetor. And I just wanted to show you some of the things that we did um, to try to get more fuel to it. First of all, this thing came with no power valve in the secondary. So obviously the first thing we did was we, we put a power valve in it. We also, if you can take a look, I'm gonna go ahead and try to zoom this thing in. Try to get it right here. Take a look down here. We got this passage behind the power valve. Well, that, that originally came with um, a passage that was, a, I think, around probably around 60 or 65 thousandths. And what Steve from West Tech did was he just took it out so we could get more fuel flow that way. We also, obviously, if I can get these right, yeah, we changed the jets. And then uh, we started going up and up and up in jet. We finally went to 110 jet, I think is the biggest one we have. Then we just took the jets out altogether on the front and the back. So we ran it with no jets, with a power valve in the back, with this enrichment, with the power valve circuit here, we removed the um, plug from that and did everything we could to get as much fuel as we possibly could, but still the same thing. When we would run the motor, and I'll show you an air fuel curve here, you can take a look at it, it's just trending lean. This thing, it's like it's running out of fuel. So that was with the E85 carburetor. Now let's take a look at what we did with Kevin's carburetor. Okay, 
We got, um, this is Kevin's gas carburetor, and we've had this at West Tech for years and years and years. Basically everything that I've run that's been a blow through, basically we've used this carburetor. And I've run it with pro chargers and turbos and big blocks and small blocks, LS motors, everything. And it's worked really well. And we've made lots of power with this thing. We've made over 1,200 with it. So we know that from the gasoline standpoint that it's not a needle and seat because this is a single needle and seat. And uh, on this particular carburetor, um, before I tried this, Kevin came out and um, I'd give him a call and he said, yeah, I'll come out and I got a customers that I'm sending out and I'll give him a call. And he said it was okay. And again, thanks a lot for helping us out. He brought an E85 blow through carburetor with, and this is one of the things I like about Kevin's carburetors. It's got these um, adjustable boost, ref boost reference power valves. So we can basically adjust the onset of when it's enriching that fuel, which is kind of cool. And it works out really well. It allows us with a combination of jets to make this thing work. And we run it on, like I said, centripetal supercharged stuff, turbo stuff, different size displacements, and it's always worked pretty well. But on the E85 carburetor, and I think I got a picture I can hook you up and show you there where we were doing some testing. Kevin came out and um, he worked hard on it. I mean, he was drilling passages. We were obviously changing jets. We were obviously changing the power valves and stuff. And everything that we did to it, um, it wasn't working the way that, and obviously Kevin's got a lot of experience. Again, thanks for coming out, man. He's got a lot of experience and he knows what these do and he knows how to tune them. So he was trying to work his magic, but everything that we did, did basically the same thing that it was doing over on the quick fuel side. We could change the, we could get a little bit more fuel um, globally and we could get the thing rich down at the bottom but we could never stop the thing from basically trending lean so every every time we would run it if we would try to run it up high um, we would get into the kind of dangerous air fuel readings you know up near the thousand horsepower mark so on his like I said on the E85 um, he, he adjusted the passage he drilled that thing out he went from 60 to 90 thousandths um, that should change it a lot. We also tried the um, the bowl vent tubes, and that did change the air fuel mixture on the E85 carburetor. As a matter of fact, it had a, it changed it by almost two air fuel points, which was quite a bit. But again, <laughs> and and all we did was try to run it without it, and obviously that leaned the thing out quite a bit. But having them in place worked real well. But that didn't do it either. So. We, we basically couldn't get enough fuel, it seemed like, to the carburetor. Now, on the dyno side, we've got an A3000 fuel pump, and that will support a lot of power. And we have the fuel pressure from the fuel pump monitored. Now, we have, the, obviously, the fuel pressure um, to the pumps feeding the, the regulators feeding the carburetor are boost reference. So the fuel pressure, the delta pressure is going up. We had it adjusted initially at seven pounds feeding the carburetor. We turn that up to eight. We have a boost reference. So it's always eight pounds of fuel pressure going into the carburetor plus the boost. So again, it's boost reference at the hat and not below the carburetor. So all of that is the way that it should be. I mean, it's not our first rodeo. We've done this for the last 25 years. And, and I, like I said, I've run this, this particular carburetor, I'm sure, <laughs> 50 or 60, or 60 different motors. So it, and it's always worked well and we know how to do it. On the dyno side, we have the A3000 and that works well. Obviously we're asking that thing to flow at pressure. So at Kevin's insistence, we put a fuel pressure gauge, not just um, reading the, the pressure after the regulator, but between the pump and the regulator. And we've got more fuel pressure coming from that pump up into the regulator then we're asking the thing to supply. So we think that that's enough, but you guys let me know if you guys ever max out one of these pumps. I know that the flow rate's gonna go down dramatically as we increase the pressure. I mean, the pump flow goes down with pressure, so that's kind of a normal deal. Let me know if you think that's it. And hey, Aeromotive guys, if you guys are watching this video, let me know what you think. Are we, you know, we're at 15 PSI of boost pressure. So that puts us at 22 or 23 PSI of fuel pressure, so is that too much for that pump? But we we checked all of the filters in the pump, none of those are clogged. Um, everything seems like it's working like it should, but yet, every time we run it with one of these carburetors, it's trending lean. 
and maybe it's a, the other thing we tried is we had a one inch spacer between the carburetor and our Edelbrock Super Victor intake. We removed the we removed the plate. That helped a little bit, but again, like everything else that we changed, it made a global change in fuel pressure. So it just changed it just brought the whole curve down a little bit. Um, the other thing we're seeing, which I thought was odd, is we're seeing a difference in air fuel from one side of the motor to the other. Now we we <laughs> we checked everything. We again we checked compression and, and spark plugs and, and wires and everything. And no matter what we do, we're still seeing that same. We tried different sensors. We tried running one from the Holly, one from the Dyna. We swapped those two over. We swapped individual sensors to make sure the sensors weren't bad. And we're definitely getting a reading, a different reading side to side, which is weird. And one side of the motor actually is fine. Um, it's safe enough for us to run. The other side is the lean side and it was consistently lean. <laughs> so again, um, is it the intake manifold? Is it, you know, the cylinder heads are the same? You guys let me know. Let me know what you think. Make sure to comment. Tell us what you think is happening. Um, obviously, Holly is sending us another ECU so we can run this thing fuel injected. And I think that that's obviously going to solve the problem. But I want to be able to also do this with a carburetor because again, I've already run this thing with a blower and fuel injection and made over a thousand horsepower without any problem. Okay guys, <laughs> what do you think it is? Let me know. Thanks for watching guys. Like, share, subscribe, do all that stuff. I'll keep this stuff going. I keep letting you know what's going on. Thanks for watching guys.